Nice to see you. My name is Ashley Lohr and I'm the host of the Lansing Symphony's LSO Kids program. As an LSO kid, you have the opportunity to hear from Lansing Symphony musicians and their instruments, hear from a local celebrity music teacher reading a favorite story, and learn a fun at-home activity. Today, I had the opportunity to meet with Neil, who will be sharing with us a pretty shiny and spectacular instrument. Oh my goodness! I've heard that sound before, but can you tell me what instrument is that and what family of instruments is it from? I am playing the trumpet, and the trumpet is a member of the brass family. Oh neat! I, we've talked a little bit about the brass family so far. Um, can you tell me what it's made out of then? Well, you might imagine it's made out of brass, even though it's silver on top of the brass. And so that's what uh, all the members of the brass family have that in common. But actually, what, uh, because you could say a saxophone is made out of brass as well, but it's not a member of the brass family. What we all do uh, similarly in our family is that we make a sound a certain way. We, uh, if you've ever given anybody the raspberries, like if somebody says something that you think is Ah, I don't think that's so great. You might, maybe your brother or sister will say something that you don't think is very, very smart or very right or something. You'll say, ah, oh. right? So something like that, we do. Into an instrument. And then uh, that's how we make music hard to believe. And so it's just blowing air across your lips and getting them to vibrate. And actually, Ashley, there are a couple of really old, ancient versions of the trumpet that people used to use, uh, often to communicate over a long distance. I have a horn here from an animal called the kudu, which is sort of an antelope. I don't think they have them in Michigan. But uh, uh, if you can imagine, this horn on a big old antelope and then they they take it off and they sort of hollow it out so it's almost like a trumpet and they cut off the very tip and it sounds like this on the Lion King, is that right? I think you, I think that's exactly it. I think that's exactly the one, just like the Lion King. You might recognize some of those sounds. Now, the other thing that I have, this might have been from a different part of the world, but I have a seashell. It's called a conch or a conch shell. I'm not sure how, how you pronounce that. But um, it, you can imagine that a seashell is just sort of, it's, a, it's like a tube, but it's wound up. And I took the tip off of this too, and I'm gonna blow into that, and you can imagine the sound. So that might have really carried over the ocean or over the lake, and you might, maybe that's how, how a mom would call her son or daughter home for lunch. Oh my gosh, it did sound very loud. And I think I've seen those shells in Moana. So wow, we're talking a lot of Disney today. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's where they might have found that sort of thing. Well, you know, all the music I've played so far has been a type of music, that thing that I played on the trumpet, and then that little bit that I played on the, the kudu horn, and then I played on the conch shell. 
that's a certain type of music that we call fanfare. And that's a sort of important part of the history, our history as trumpet players in our music. But I have to say, I like to play all kinds of music. Maybe you recognize this one. A shell that comes from the ocean. Yeah, that's just you. Know, these sea creatures got to communicate, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, getting back to the trumpet, because you've been telling us all about these other things and and ways that people have played on instruments from nature, and and I'm sure that's kind of where the inspiration for the trumpet came from. Absolutely. Um, could you maybe play something fast for us on your trumpet today? Oh man, I'd love to. sounds like that before too um, and now I know that they're the trumpet yeah that was a, that was a nice little tune it's a little dance tune called the Bessonian polka oh I've heard of polkas too very cool although polkas aren't they usually done with tubas uh, uh, let's not talk about other instruments <laughs> oh, okay. so I'm wondering then if the trumpet is just so awesome can you play something slow for us today Oh, yeah. You know, as much as I like to play dance tunes, I really like to play so slow melodies. And so this is one of my favorite, and it's a folk song from Switzerland. just lovely. Um, I really appreciate that in the examples that you've played for us. Um, I've been hearing a little bit in terms of different volumes or dynamics. Um, I'm wondering, do you have something that you could play for us that really kind of features both loud sounds and quiet sounds? Oh, absolutely. And in fact, that's one of the things that I love about the trumpet. Uh, it's easy to sound nice and loud, but then it's a, a really fun challenge to play quietly. So uh, the piece that I play now is an opening of a symphony, a big, big piece, and it starts with just the trumpet all by itself. And, and so you'll see here, it sort of goes from one thing to another thing, from quiet to loud. at 
how quiet you sounded, but then how loud you were by the end. Is that tough to do? Well, it takes a little bit of practice. And I always, uh, I, it's easy to sound loud, but if you're going to be welcomed as a trumpet player, you also have to learn how to play soft. So it's a little bit like as a kid, it's always fun to play outside and do the things that you can do outside. But your mom will tell you, you have to use your indoor voice now and maybe take that wrestling outside or stay inside and don't wrestle. So that's the way I sort of think about it. Oh, I'm not good at using my indoor voice sometimes. <laughs> Um, so how old were you when you started to play the trumpet? Oh my gosh, that was a while ago. I was 10 years old. And why did you choose the trumpet of all the instruments you could have chosen? Well, we had a lot of music in my family. We liked to sing and all of my brothers played instruments. In fact, I, I was the youngest of five boys in my family. And uh, really, I think about it, a loud instrument seemed like a good idea. Two of my older brothers played trumpet, so there was always a trumpet sort of laying around, and I would play on their instruments, and I, I actually just took to it pretty quickly. Oh, neat. That sounds like a lot of fun. So how did you get involved with the symphony, and what has inspired you to continue playing with the Lansing Symphony? Well, I've just always loved to play the trumpet. And so, uh, and one of the things that I really love about being in, uh, about playing an instrument just generally is being part of something that's so big and magnificent. And if you haven't heard, if you haven't been in the same room as an orchestra, man, you need to try that because it's pretty darn cool. You might not remember for the last time that you climbed a little hill in your yard or that you walked through a little puddle, but you'll definitely remember climbing a mountain or being out on the ocean. It's awesome. And I think of playing in a symphony or even just even listening to a symphony, being in the same room as that sound is awesome. We've been learning so much about the trumpet today. I'm wondering, is there just one more thing you could play for us? So uh, one thing that I really love about uh, playing the trumpet is that I have a number of trumpets. Uh, I have a B flat trumpet and a C trumpet and an E flat trumpet and a piccolo trumpet and a flugelhorn and a cornet. And so if you like lots of toys, you should be a trumpet player. I so um, the trumpet that I'm going to use uh, for, this, uh, for this concerto is called an E flat trumpet. It just means it's in the key, a different key. But you can see that it's a little bit shorter than the trumpet that I was playing usually. And this is the one that I'll use in the orchestra oh, about 90%, 95% of the time. Uh, but this E flat trumpet is, a, is a, a trumpet that I might use for a, a small chamber piece, or if I were going to play a concerto with an orchestra, um, I might play this instrument. So I hope you like this. This is just the first little bit of the Hummel trumpet concerto. like something that a king or queen should listen to while they're walking into a room. Absolutely. I think the trumpet is the instrument of kings or queens. Oh, thank you so much for sharing everything you did with us today about the trumpet. I feel like we learned just so much. Well, this was really fun and I, I love getting a chance for, to play for people. And even though I'm just sort of looking at a computer screen, it makes me think about the next time that I'll get a chance to play for people in the same room. And I'm really looking forward to that. And I hope that all of you kids out there will come hear the Lansing Symphony sometime. Oh, absolutely. I hope to see you soon. Take care, Ashley. This was really great. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Wow, Neil, that was so impressive. 
it was great to hear you play the trumpet. And I think my favorite part was learning about what a fanfare is and how it's played. Thank you again for sharing your talents with us today. Up next, I have a story that's read by Mrs. Barnes, who's from Holt Schools. And the story that she has to read to us is a very musical story about some things in nature. Hi, my name is Mrs. Barnes and I teach at Elliott Elementary in Holt, and this is Over in the Meadow. Over in the meadow, in the sand, in the sun, lived a bumpy mother toad and her little toady one. Wink, said the mother, I wink, said the one. So they winked and they blinked in the sand, in the sun. Over in the meadow where the sky gleams blue lived a woolly mother sheep and her little lammies too. Ba, said the mother, we ba, said the two. So they bought and they ran where the sky gleams blue. Over in the meadow in a hole in a tree lived a smooth mother robin and her little robins three. Sing, said the mother, we sing, said the three. So they sang and they chirped in a hole in the tree. Over in the meadow in the reeds on the shore lived a spiky mother muskrat and her little muskrats four. Dive, said the mother, we dive, said the four. So they dived and they burrowed in the reeds on the shore. Over in the meadow in a snug beehive lived a fuzzy mother bee and her little bees five. Buzz, said the mother, we buzz, said the five. So they buzzed and they hummed in the snug beehive. <clears throat> Over in the meadow in a nest built of sticks lived a shiny mother crow and her little crow six. Caw, said the mother, we caw, said the six. So they caught and they called in their nest built of sticks. Over in the meadow where the grass is so even lived a furry mother mouse and her little mousy seven. Squeak, said the mother, we squeak, said the seven. So they squeaked and they sniffed in the grass, salt and even. Over in the meadow by the old mossy gate lived a scaly mother lizard and her little lizards ate. Bask, said the mother, we bask, said the eight. So they basked in the sun by the old mossy gate. And over in the meadow where the stream water shines lived a slippery mother fish and her little fishies nine. Swim, said the mother, we swim, said the nine. So they swam and they leapt where the stream water shines. <clears throat> And over in the meadow in a sly little den lived a hairy mother spider and her little spider's ten. Spin, said the mother, we spin, said the ten. So they spun lacy webs in their sly little den. Mrs. Barnes, that was beautiful singing and such a fun counting story. I look forward to reading that story again soon someday, and I'll bet your kids in Holt schools feel the same way. Guys, I've been thinking about how we've talked about nature with Neil, and we talked about nature with Mrs. Barnes, and the different sounds that you can hear, and I just, I was inspired by all of that. And so today's at home activity isn't exactly an activity that 
you should maybe be doing in your house, I'm going to challenge you to go outside and experience nature. For my nature challenge, I went outside. I explored some woods and I listened to what my feet sounded like moving on the ground. I really hope that you enjoyed listening to the things that I found in nature around my house, and I hope that you can find some really neat things around your house too. You might find some sticks and play a stick game. You might find some rocks that you can throw around, preferably not at windows. You might find some fun rhythms in the way that people move or the way that cars drive by, or you might hear some beautiful melodies from birds like I did. You just never know what you'll find. All you need to do is go outside and listen. I really wanna thank Neil today for sharing his trumpet with us. It was so cool to hear. And I would like to thank Mrs. Barnes for reading and really singing over in the meadow to us. And I'd also like to thank our sponsors for making sure that we can be LSO kids. Jackson National Life, the Ari Olds Foundation, MSU, FCU, and Comerica. I can't wait to see you again and learn more about the symphony. See you soon, LSO kids. Thank you.